Hello everyone, I'm Vincent Racaniello and this is Virus Watch, the weekly video report on what is happening in the amazing world of viruses. Can you name five viruses that are spread by mosquitoes? Zika virus should be the first virus you think of, followed by dengue virus, chikungunya virus, yellow fever virus, and West Nile virus. These viruses have all been in the news a lot, so you should recognize them. Let's take a look at how mosquitoes transmit a virus from one person to another person. The name mosquito, by the way, is Spanish for little fly. Mosquitoes are winged insects with six legs and tube-like mouth parts called a proboscis, which is used for feeding. There are over 3,500 different known mosquito species, and it's estimated that mosquitoes have been on Earth for nearly 200 million years. Both male and female mosquitoes feed on plant juices, but only female mosquitoes take blood meals. And that's because female mosquitoes need blood to produce their eggs. The female mosquito detects a potential biting victim by first following trails of carbon dioxide, which, of course, we exhale with every breath. Then the mosquito homes in on a variety of organic compounds that make up what we call the human odor plume, such as lactic acid on the skin and ammonia on human sweat. By the way, the mosquito repellent DEET works because it blocks the odorant receptors that mosquitoes use to sense these chemicals. After the mosquito lands on the skin, she probes with her proboscis to find a suitable spot, then pierces the skin. The mosquito mouth is made up of six different parts, but only two of these actually penetrate the skin. Here's a diagram of human skin, which is made up of an outer layer called the epidermis, and underneath it, the dermis. The mosquito inserts her proboscis into the dermis because that's where blood vessels are found. The mosquito then searches with her proboscis for a blood vessel. This process is shown in this movie of a mosquito on the skin of a mouse. You can see the proboscis, the long flexible brown tube, as it's moved back and forth by the mosquito on the surface looking for a blood vessel. During this probing period, the mosquito is injecting saliva into the host. Saliva contains a collection of chemicals, which include anticoagulants. These prevent blood clotting, vasodilators to keep the blood vessels wide, and anesthetics to prevent us from sensing the mosquito as it slides the proboscis around and in our skin. We would slap the mosquito and kill it otherwise. You can see in this movie that the mosquito finally finds a blood vessel. The proboscis slips in to the vessel and begins to draw blood. It's amazing that the mosquito applies so much suction that the blood vessel is actually becoming thinner. As the mosquito draws in blood, it fills her midgut, and that's what you might call her stomach. The blood cells are kept, and the plasma, which is the liquid portion of the blood, is discarded via the anus. If there is virus in the blood of the host, a condition that we call viremia, then of course the mosquito would be ingesting the virus along with the blood. Over the next few days, the blood cell proteins are digested and then the female lays a batch of eggs. During this time, the virus replicates in the mosquito midgut and enters the circulatory system, where it can then spread throughout the mosquito, reaching the salivary glands. For West Nile virus, it takes seven to 10 days for virus to appear in mosquito saliva after the mosquito has taken a blood meal. When the female mosquito is ready to make a new batch of eggs, it seeks another blood meal. This time, when the mosquito is probing and depositing saliva in the skin, along with the saliva comes a virus from the salivary gland. And that is how mosquitoes transmit viruses from one host to another. You can see from this series of events that there are two main requirements for transmission 
of a virus by a mosquito. First, the virus must cause a viremia in the host so it can be taken up by the mosquito while the mosquito is ingesting blood. Second, the virus must replicate in the mosquito and make its way to the salivary glands from the midgut. These two requirements limit the number of viruses that can be transmitted by mosquitoes. For example, influenza virus is not transmitted by mosquitoes in part because it doesn't cause a viremia. HIV does cause a viremia, but that virus cannot replicate in the mosquito. Sometimes mosquitoes transmit viruses mechanically without the need for virus replication in the mosquito. An example is myxoma virus, which infects rabbits and is spread by mosquitoes. While biting an infected lesion on the mosquito on the rabbit's skin, the mosquito proboscis is contaminated with virus, which is then transmitted to the next host. Amazingly, components of mosquito saliva also seem to stimulate virus replication in the host. This observation has been made for dengue virus and West Nile virus. Mosquito spit may also st stimulate Zika virus replication. In case you're wondering, the mosquito has no particular desire to transmit viruses. Viruses are parasites that are just effectively transmitted by this route. In fact, in many cases, virus infection of mosquitoes may be bad for the mosquito. It can shorten their lifespan or their ability to produce eggs. That's Virus Watch for June 8th, 2016. For more in-depth discussions about viruses, check out our science show this week in virology at microbe.tv slash twiv. I'm Vincent Racaniello, and I'll see you next week. Mm -hmm.